uh, we'll again continue the discussion on semi groups and their generators. Okay, so again, uh, let me start with the setup. So, X a Banach space. Uh, T T a semi group in X. Uh, semi group and A its generator. So, okay. so before proceeding further, uh, let me define a concept. Okay. So, this is definition. A densely defined linear operator linear operator A is said to generate generate a semi group. So, given a semi group, we know how its generator is uh, defined, and now it is the converse. So, this is the concept. So, we say that that linear operator generates uh, a semi group if there exists a semi group. T T So, once a semi group is given, we know that it has generator. So, whose generator is EJ. Okay, so, that is the definition. So, we immediately have not existence, but uniqueness. Okay. Uh, a dense again. Okay, that A can generate same thing. A can generate at most one semi group. So, we have uniqueness, okay. whether a linear given linear operator generates a semi group or not that is not clear at this point, but if it generates then there is only one semi group and this is an immediate consequence of what already you have seen. Okay. So, just let me uh, give a quick proof of that. So, suppose T 1 T and T 2 T are two semi groups are semi groups with generator A. Okay, so, they have the same operator A as generator. Okay. So, take any t positive at t equal to 0 anyhow their identity. So, they coincide. So, there is no problem. So, let us want to show that for any t positive t 1 t is equal to t 2 t. Okay. So, pick any x in domain of A. 
Okay. So, we have already seen the differentiability of the map, then this map uh, S going to T 1 T minus S T 2 S x. So, this is for 0 less than s less than t okay, in this ring, then both the <coughs> arguments are non-negative is differentiable okay, and we also seen that what is the derivative. Okay. So, a simple exercise uh, using that uh, what we did earlier and its derivative is 0 just check this derivative is equal to 0. Okay. So, it is a constant. Okay. So, in particular, so in this interval this <coughs> mapping is a constant. So, you put s equal to 0 and s equal to t and conclude that t 1 t x is equal to t 2 t x. So, this is true for all x in d a, but d a is dense. Okay. So, that is how you, but d a is dense and t 1 and t 2 t are continuous. So, by in x. So, that implies t 1 t is equal to t 2 t. And this t is positive is arbitrary. So, that so that implies uniqueness. Okay. So, the existence uh, will be the content of the Hilyoshida theorem okay, that we will discuss next. Okay. So, before that I want to state one theorem so, this is called saturation theorem. Uh, uh, it has important applications to PD, especially while studying uh, the growth of solutions. Of course, we do not have time to discuss all that thing. Apart from that, it unifies several results in analysis, uh, notably those of Titchmarsh and Hardy Littlewood that I will uh, just uh, say that. So, again the setup is T T okay, and it generator A. Okay. So, this is the theorem. So, let me just state that. So, there are three parts. So, just let me uh, state them. So, let x y belong to x be such that uh, lim if of norm uh, a tau x minus y as tau tends to 0 plus is 0. So, again let me recall this A tau we define this as tau inverse T tau minus identity. Okay. So, if it were just limit then this is the definition of the uh, generator. So, we immediately conclude that x is in d a and a x is equal to y, but here also the same conclusion even with this limb inf. In particular, if you assume this norm is little o of t uh, not the norm, uh, this norm itself is okay, uh, little o of 1. Okay, then. Uh, 
uh, x belongs to d a and a x equal to 1. Okay, so, the same conclusion even with this weaker assumption, okay, this is one thing uh, in particular, okay, let me just in particular if y is 0 then so t t x is equal to x for all x t greater than equal to 0. So, in some sense x is a fixed point of this semi group and this will give us uh, theorem of Titchmars. So, I will explain that. So, the second part if x in d a so we have uh, t t x minus x is less than or equal to supremum of norm of T u. So, you when you apply to P d e you see these as uh, growth rates. Norm of a x into t. Okay, so, there is a growth <coughs> and uh, the third one if x is reflexive. Okay, so, this is an assumption on the Banach space. So, that means, x is identified with its second dual. Uh, and uh, x belongs to x satisfies uh, the relation lim if yes, a tau again uh, tau test to 0 is finite. Okay. Then x belongs to t. Okay. So, that is, so what does that mean? That is, there exists y in x such that this a x which is just limit a tau x so this is also useful in determining whether a function has weak derivative or not in some lp class okay so compare this third condition uh, with the first one. So, first one uh, of course, we have put there y, uh, but more importantly the limit is 0. Okay. So, in other words this third condition we can rewrite that in some sense. So, this uh, let me just write t of tau minus identity x is O of tau. Okay, so, it is bounded by tau. So, when you divide by tau and take li, uh, lim if as tau tends to 0, it is some finite number. Okay. So, whereas the first one is little o of tau. Okay, so, this is the difference. Okay. 
So, I am not going to prove this, but we apply this theorem. apply this theorem to x is equal to u c b r plus this already discussed r l p r plus. So, again one less than a to p less than infinity and t t is semi group of left translations. Okay. So, what we get? So, let me just. So, this we are un only applying the first part of this theorem. Okay. So, let me just state that. Okay, so, and this condition, so the x and okay, so if <coughs> now we are using function, these are function species, so let me use some functions. So, f g belong to x satisfy uh, limb tau tends to 0 plus limit f, uh, f. So, this is function. So, I put a plus tau here minus f tau divided by tau minus g whatever that now. So, if we use uh, UCB uniformly continuous bounded functions, then we use hoop norm, otherwise it is LP norm. Okay. So, this is an x. Okay. So, this is 0, then f is actually locally absolutely continuous function. So, by Lebesgue theorem f prime exists and f prime is again in x and f prime equal to 0. Okay. So, you can also use this in uh, uh, proving when a function uh, has weak derivative. Okay. So, in particular If g is 0, then f is a constant. If x is u c b r plus and f equal to 0, because the only constant function that is in L p r plus is 0. So, if x is Okay. So, let me state the original theorem of Titch Marsh, then <coughs> so theorem this is Titch Marsh. If a b is a finite interval in R, uh, and f belongs to L one a b, and next you extend f outside a b by zero. Uh, then this a to b f x plus t minus f x 
dx tends to 0 as t tends to 0 implies f is a constant. No, this sorry, 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 just uh, you have to put the, <laughs> the t there. Okay, this. Okay, let me uh, state as in the okay. so little o of t. Okay, so that means you divide by t, and then that limit goes to zero. Okay. Uh, so, you just compare this to, uh, so this is much more complete uh, statement of that uh, teach mass theorem. Okay. So, so what happens if we replace Uh, little o t by big o t. Okay, so, that will lead to theorem of Hardy little o t and uses the uh, <coughs> the third part okay, namely uh, this one. So, if f x is reflexive and then these all the ratios are just bounded, then actually you say that it is in x in d a. Okay. So, since all L 1 is not reflexive, okay, so it is 1 has to okay, the statements differ for x equal to u c b. So, this is only a uh, subspace of L infinity okay, and L infinity as such is complicated okay. and then x equal to L 1 which is not reflexive. Okay, and then we have the the other. One. So these are all reflexive Banach spaces. Okay, so the third part actually applies uh, to this LP. Okay, but this Hardy Littlewood theorem uh, stated even for this one. Uh, the statements are bit complicated, so I will not uh, go into that, but those of you who are interested in this kind of analysis, so very nice of <coughs> it is hard analysis. So, one can dig the literature and uh, find out more about it. Okay. So, semi group theory in some sense unifies and it has more application even to analysis. Okay, with that digression, okay, again we back to uh, resolvent, uh, back to generator. Okay. So, more properties, okay. so, so again that set up T T A and we have this uh, bound omega t for all t non negative. So, m is bigger than 1 and omega is real. So, in particular when m is 1 and omega is 0, 
okay. if m is 1 and omega is 0. So, we get norm of T t less than or equal to 1 for all t greater than or equal to 0. So, this is a <coughs> contraction semigroup. And in most of the applications, we encounter only contraction semigroups. Uh, in fact, the four examples just check them in the examples all semi groups are contraction or contraction that's very easy to check okay so this is uh, <coughs> Okay, now, with a general semi group uh, satisfying that and A being its generator. So, now we have this theorem. So, this is regarding the spectrum or resolvent of the generator A. So, that is <coughs> so given a semi group. So, we already saw that A is okay, let me again recall that densely defined closed operator. This we have already seen. Okay. So, next discussion is on the uh, resolvent. Okay. Uh, the half plane in the complex domain so, this is lambda such that real part of the lambda is bigger than omega. So, omega is in the uh, estimate for the semi group is contained in. So, this is the resolvent set. with okay so we have to say what's the resolvent okay with the resolvent of a uh, let me put a power k also so this is nothing but so just lambda i minus a inverse Okay, whole power k, kth power of that operator. So, this is a bounded linear operator in x and this has this bounds. For all lambda and k equal to 1, 2 etcetera, all powers. Okay. So, the same m appears here okay. and this m does not change with k. So, it is true the same m remains for all k. Okay. So, this is uh, let me call it uh, star. Okay. So, this is of course, I can put a real lambda here, but the Heliosida theorem it is sufficient to take only real lambda. Okay. So, that is one advantage. So, that I am just uh, stating that uh, for real lambda here, lambda bigger than omega. Okay. So, this is what I was saying from the beginning that the operator should have a large resolvent set. So, here an entire half plane is in the resolvent set. Okay. So, proof is bit complicated, but I just indicate that. So, 
you have to study this theory of semi groups whatever you needed uh, carefully ok and proofs are lengthy and hard ok. So, proof ok. So, let okay, x belong to uh, x ok. So, consider this Laplace transform. Laplace transform. Okay, so let me call it R lambda. So it depends on lambda. So zero to infinity e to the minus lambda t t of t x d d t ok. So, x is an element in the Banach space ok. So, here is so we defined only for the finite interval, but here this exists as an improper Riemann integral exists improper Riemann integral. So, you look at the Laplace transform of scalar functions and you just imitate the same proof ok. So, the we already know that this t going to uh, t t x is continuous we know this and we also have this t t of x less than or equal to m e to the omega t right. So, combine that. So, if you take real part of lambda bigger than omega this makes this integral makes perfect sense. So, one then shows then shows. So, this defines an operator ok and using this uh, relation. So, immediately you see that r lambda is a less than or equal to m by lambda minus omega ok. So, just remember lambda is bigger than omega. This is immediate from the definition ok. Just you put the norm and use this relation and you see that <coughs> you can integrate that exponential ok. One then shows that this operator r lambda is precisely equal to this resolvent ok. So, that one has to verify that is uh, indeed the inverse of this lambda i minus a inverse and uh, the estimates for the higher powers uh, are derived by repeated uh, integration by parts. So, differentiation under the integral sign. So, estimates for r lambda k are obtained by uh, differentiation with respect to lambda ok. So, go through all the steps uh, by referring to some textbook. So, we list a number of textbooks which you can be used. So, I will stop here and I continue uh, with again this discussion and then we will come to Helio Shida theorem. Thank you.